What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Crew 2 and in this video I'll be doing a comparison between the Lamborghini Gallardo LP574 Superleggera versus the recently added Aerial Atom. Now I want to do this because the Superleggera obviously is on top of the leaderboards and pretty much everything and if you guys are doing a no restriction race in a Summit, this car is normally the one to choose. Obviously, the Porsche GT is pretty good as well. But my goodness, this car has always been my go-to. I've always used it in Summits, and it has never let me down. But the recently added Aerial Atom, I feel like, is actually pretty good. And when I was driving it, I was insanely impressed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two races in each vehicle here. Pretty much do one and one on each one there. I'm also going to do a top speed run on each car as well to see which one really comes out on top there. Although that really doesn't matter as much when it comes to like actually racing and handling and overall speed and all that. Because there's some things about the aerial item I think I want to address in this video on why I believe it doesn't take the spot compared to the Super Legera. Anyway, let's jump right into this. I'll also be showing my settings on both cars at the end of the video. So if you guys want to try them out on your vehicles, I recommend that because I feel like they are pretty dang good. Now, jumping to the top speed test, starting right off here with the Super Legera. Now, I came to the highway over here by the salt flats. I feel like this is the best place to do this. So let's immediately accelerate and hit that Nitro Chemist to get this car up to speed. I know top speed on these cars really isn't the number one thing you got to look for. I know some cars are slower than others, but have better handling and have better characteristics to them than like just top speed which is a pretty big thing this car is going to be a six speed and the shifting on this car is very quick and that definitely makes it a lot better for racing and all that to be honest so let's speed it up here a little bit more nitro chemist see what this car can get to you guys see continuing speed down there 262 miles an hour the super Gera can get to which is uh except for that ford i just ran into insanely high for the streetcar class i mean a lot of the vehicles can't even actually get to like 240 some of them and some of them only do like 238 235 ish so that is actually really impressive so 262 miles an hour on the lamborghini super now moving over to the aerial item let's get this thing up to speed real fast here so i'm gonna move over here as well and dodge the speed traps i always run into those for some reason so getting right up to speed here getting back on the highway the handling on this car is just mind-blowing to me i really think it's what sets it apart from everything else is this thing is just insane when it comes to the turning ability and all like it's actually mind-blowing Let's accelerate here. So 230 miles an hour. I feel like the Super Gera is probably going to beat this thing. I believe this thing's like 250, but let's fly around this turn here and hit the nitrous right over here. So 248, and I almost ran into that truck, but luckily the handling saved me there. So 250 miles an hour is going to be the top speed on this, maybe 251, but you're going to have to pretty much drain your nitrous to get there. So the Super Gera will have 12 miles an hour faster than this car, and that car also gets the speed a little bit quicker than this thing does. But nonetheless, this thing could catch up for the most part, especially around turns. So for the first race, I decided to do the strip special in both the cars. I may end up doing the race over down in Miami as well. It's kind of like a short track like this. Now, I'm sure many people are aware of what the Super Gera can do. I mean, this car is definitely no stranger to anybody, I think, at this point. I mean, if you look at any of the leaderboards on pretty much most of the street races, this car is easily on top of pretty much all of them. For good reasoning, though, it is really good, and this car can pretty much do it all. So I feel like so many people drive it as I slide into a wall there. Uh, but nonetheless, though, I think what really sets this car apart is how it's actually set up. So, obviously, some cars have really good handling, and they don't have top speed, looking at the Wasp Edition there. Um, even on that race in Miami I'm going to do, I actually beat my score with that when I was driving this car. I actually beat my score with the Aerial Atom, which is kind of funny. That car has insanely good handling, but what lacks in it is the speed a little bit compared to this vehicle. And I think that's what really sets the Super Legera apart from every other street car, is how much speed this car has. And not only that, the handling. Obviously, there could be some, you know, issues with that if some cars have really good top speed. But the handling sucks could be a big problem if you're doing a track like something like this, for example. A car with better handling with less top speed and or speed in general might be a little bit better for that matter. But it kind of depends on what you guys are really going for. Um, I'm trying to aim for something that can kind of do it all. And I think that's why this car is pretty much on top of everything because it really can do it all. It's kind of like a jack of all trades, honestly. I mean, you could pretty much do any of the races with it, get a high score with it and be happy with it. And looking at the summits and all that, which are pretty much all... Um, normally driven with this car if it's no restriction. I would say that's for good reasoning because people want the best vehicle that they know is reliable and can do these races with no issues. And it seems that the Lamborghini can do them all with no problems at all. Here's the first race completed. So jumping into the strip special now, I'm going to go over the speed of this vehicle in this race and the next one I will go over the handling on why I think the handling in this car is definitely top tier. So the speed I did notice, I want to go over this because I feel like it's pretty important. I did notice that this car is are going to probably be a little bit slower than the Super Legera uh, overall speed. Now, it's not really a bad thing, though, because obviously it has a handling. But you guys will notice when trying to race this thing against it, it just won't be able to really keep up with it. I've been noticing that when driving it a little bit. Uh, like, short tracks like this with turns, though, the car could obviously benefit with how good it's handling. 
Nonetheless, though, the speed of the Super Jero will probably still beat it, so this car might not be able to compete in that aspect, though. Although, you could still probably use it in summits, I don't think it's going to be the greatest option if people were wondering if this car could take over the crown. Nonetheless, though, it's still pretty dang fast and isn't slow in any way. I mean, the car does 250 miles an hour. You get up to speed nicely with Nitro Chemist. The biggest issue, like I said, is going to be how the car is gearing and how it, like, shifts and all that. Now, it does have a six-speed, but I think it's how the car actually shifts and how it is, like, moving with its speed and all that is what really messes it up a little bit. You guys will notice when trying to get up to speed that the car might struggle sometimes, and I did notice that when racing it around, especially on this little track here, and I just failed. By hitting curbs there, I noticed any car pretty much spins out, so that's one thing about this vehicle, obviously, but the Super Legere will do that too. So, when it comes to the speed, though, what are some things you guys really want to look for in these cars if you guys are testing them out? So, obviously, the Super Legere can hold its speed really nicely and get up to speed quickly. I noticed the Aerial Atom has decent acceleration, but has issues holding its speed when actually going around turns or coming out of them. I noticed it might bog a little bit, unless you're in the right gear and all that. If you guys are running automatic, it might be a little harder to do that. But I did notice that when racing it, and I do think that might hold it back a bit from being top tier. The handling on the car obviously is incredible, which I'm going to get into in the next race, but at least the car is decently quicker than a lot of the other street cars. Now jumping into the Miami Harbor Special, I wanted to take the cars in here and test them out in here because it's like a little like circuit type of track as well. So obviously the Super Legera, like I mentioned before, is pretty much going to be the jack of all trades when it comes to the street class. I mean, the speed on this car really is insane to me. Um, it's just how it can hold turns and obviously be able to hold speed, something we really look for. This car could pretty much do it all, and I think that's why it'll continue to own most of the summits and street races and all that until something might come out and be able to beat it. Obviously, I've been hearing about the Porsche GT that, you know, is apparently pretty good as well, but that car doesn't have the, like, high-end speed ability that this car does. The fact that this thing can actually hit 260 miles an hour and no issues at all and actually hold its speed in turns and come out of them, just fly out of them, and Nitrous just boosts it up really bad. Like, it's honestly crazy how good the Super Legera actually is in this class. I mean, there's a hundred and, like, what, 80 cars, I think, in this class, and this car really is on top and pretty much beating them all in every way. So, flying around the turns here, I wanted to pick this race also because there's a lot of turns and stuff, so I wanted to see what the aerial item could do in here against this thing, but obviously, the Super Legera will probably still own it. I think that's what really sets this car apart so much is the fact that it really can do everything. I mean, if you guys are doing races with a lot of turns like this, you could be like, oh, I'll pick the Lamborghini. Let's see what I can do. And you'll still beat your time in this car than you would in other ones. And then you'll be like, oh, well, now there's a race with a lot of top speed. What can I use? Lamborghini's going to also be chosen because this car is just that good. And I feel like that's why everyone really should pick this thing up. I feel like most people probably already have this car, though, because when you check the leaderboards, it's pretty much just this car and nothing else, which is nothing wrong with that at all. I'm sure my people want my, you know, maybe more variety in there with racing and all that. Nonetheless, though, this thing is definitely a great competitor, even probably for PvP as well. You can't really go wrong, so this car really could do it all. I'm sure many people are like, well, what car should I buy in the street class to be able to compete in these summits? I'm sure many people are going to be like, oh, we'll get the Lamborghini because you will definitely do really great with that car. Funnily enough, I actually drove the Huracan before this. Um, that was actually my favorite street car before I started driving this one more, realizing how good it was. And I realized really fast on why this car really is on top. So I'm going to finish up this race right now here in two minutes and about six seconds, probably beating my aerial item with no issues there. Now jumping into the Miami Harbor race in the aerial item. So I did want to mention, I'm not saying this car is slow in any way, because I might have been saying that a little bit last race, but I would say this car is lacking speed a little bit compared to the Lamborghini in some ways though. Nonetheless though, the handling on the car definitely pretty much sets it apart from a lot of the other vehicles. I'm still mind blown by how this thing actually drives. You guys actually want to see as well, come over here in the Miami Harbor race and just see how much this car can hold itself in a turn and how, mu how much stability it has like it really is crazy to be honest on how good this thing really is i think that's what really set it apart compared to the other street cars in the game i know the speed isn't the greatest on it which could definitely be a downfall of it when trying to use it and stuff with how it might lack a little bit but the turning ability on this thing is insane look at that line this thing can hold um let's get it up to speed a little bit catch up to my ghost though so you guys will notice how it actually takes some time to speed up compared to the lamborghini does that car flies up speed really quickly this car takes it a little bit of time to get there. Nonetheless, though, it can. It just takes it longer to get to that said area. I notice it doesn't hold speed as well either when going in and out of turns and stuff like that or coming, like, fly, trying to fly out of the turn at the highest speed possible. I notice the car might bog down a little bit, which could definitely be an issue. I've been noticing that in these races a little bit when testing it out. Um, I wouldn't say it's, like, a huge flaw to the car, but it definitely will slow you down if you're trying to get the best time in some of these. So I have to say, overall, guys, obviously the crown's still going to go to the Lamborghini. But the aerial item is definitely going to be a car that can be used for competing and stuff like that and probably used in summits. I might even try it out in one of the summit races. 
uh, in the future and see how it actually does in there so I can get a good time with it and see if the speed really does hold it back as much as I think it does. From what I've been seeing, it seems like it definitely will mess it up a little bit. But my goodness, is this car handling blow my mind. I mean, it's just... I don't understand how good this thing actually turns like this. Like, it is actually amazing. I know it's like a little, like a track car, and I'm pretty sure it's powered by a VTEC engine. Uh, but my goodness, is the aerial item just something else? I really do love how these look. Crazy, these cars cost like 70 or 80 grand in real life, too. It's actually kind of insane. I've seen like one or two, and they look absolutely insane in real life. So you guys want to just cruise around in one of these and actually enjoy it, I would definitely recommend that. Because I was cruising around this car, hitting turns and stuff. And I was having a blast on how this thing actually turns. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the aerial item. Do you guys really like this car? Are you driving it? Are you testing it out? And obviously the Lamborghini is still going to stay on top there. Which who knows, maybe a car in the future might be able to take that car off the podium. And here are the settings I'm running on my Lamborghini Gallardo LP574 Superleggera. And here are the settings I'm running on my aerial item.